Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to say how honored I am and grateful to Rilam uh, President Professor Ravindra Getu for his kind invitation to attend this ceremony dedicated to the awarding of the Colonetti Medals and to the Colonetti Award speeches. I hope you will forgive my English being a little rusty. I want here to express <coughs> the heartfelt appreciation and gratitude of the whole Colonetti families to Rilem for having established the Gustavo Colonetti medals dedicated to the memory of my father, having been one of the founding members of Rilem and its first president in 1948. We particularly appreciate the fact that the Colonetti medals are dedicated to our researching, having performed high-level scientific research, as this perfectly fits with one important aspect of my father's global personality, at the intersection between science and society. That is, the keen attention he always dedicated to the young generation of students and researchers, both in normal life as well as in course of the tragic political and military events of past century. Gustavo Colonetti was born in Torino in 1886. He graduated in 1908 in civil engineering and entered the academic career in the field of mechanics and of solids and structures in 1910. He also graduated in mathematics in 1911. The same year, he became full professor, teaching first in Genova and Pisa, and then since 1920 at the Politecnico di Torino, the Turing Institute of Technology, of which he was director from 1925 to 1925. His specific interests and achievements are well known by all experts of structural mechanics at the international level, and it is certainly out of my scope to enter here the details about these aspects. I will just briefly remind that they concern principally the refinement and extension of the theory of elasticity with special attention to the effects of inelastic strains and imposed deformations. The related second theorem of reciprocity is also known as Colonetti theorem. This extended theore theoretical format of the mechanics and solids sets also the theoretical basis for the new, at the time, construction techniques of processed concrete. These scientific contributions were mainly developed in the pre-war years. The terrible events of the final years of the World War II dramatically impact on the life of Colonetti and his family. In September 43, not having joined fascism, Colonetti left northern Italy at the time under Nazi's occupation, and with his elder daughter, he went to Switzerland, first to Lugano, and then to Lausanne, where his wife, Laura Badini Confalinieri, will join them in December with the other four children. While my parents lived in Lausanne, where Colonetti was entrusted, of course, of structural mechanics at the engineering school, my brother and my sisters were dislocated in different boarding schools while I was hosted by a couple of Swiss farmers. In that period of exile, Colonetti, with the help of his wife, developed a huge and heroic humanitarian action intended to take care of the destiny of many young Italian refugees exiled in Switzerland for both political and racial reasons. Many of these refugees were Jewish, escaping from the racial segregation 
and persecution of fascism rarely. Taking advantage of his personal links with the Accademia Pontificia, the Academy of the Vatican State, Colonetti and his wife, who was working for the FESA European Students Relief Fund, developed and extended action to help and sustain the exiled students and reconnect them through diplomatic and other channels with their families. Back to Italy, immediately after the war, they will continue their assistance of students, helping their reinsection in their studies and in the civil society. As a, ma a second major contribution, Colonetti, through his links with the Swiss political and uh, academic uh, authorities, founded first in Lausanne and then in other Swiss cities, the Italian university camp for the young Italian refugees, a can kind of Italian uh, university in exile where he personally gave lecture of structural mechanics with the cooperation of some exiled assistant, as for instance, Franco Levi, who on his return to Italy will become the celebrated scientist and first president of SEB, the European Committee for Concrete. Under distorted titles, evocating since the mechanics, science and mechanics, in order to avoid the interdiction of Swiss authorities for subjects beyond these fields, Colonetti invited some eminent exiled Italian intellectuals and political personnel. This uh, team dedicated to the outline for the foundation of the new free Italian nation after the incipient fall of fascism. On December 10th, 1944, Colonetti, his wife and other eminent exiled Italian intellectual and po political figures were brought with a flight provided by the Allied States to Rome, already being liberated from the Nazi domination. One of these eminent people was Luigi Einaudi, who will become the second president of the newborn Italian Republic. Colonetti was nominated president of CNR, the Italian National Research Council, which he redenominated for a few years Italian National Reconstruction Council. And he devoted this institution to the planning of the reconstruction of the Italian nation devastated by war. He completely reorganized the CNR by setting new research centers with major scientific areas. In 1945, he got it, organized the first national conference on reconstruction and subsequently established the UNRWA CASAS, United Nations Relief and Rehabilitation Administration, Independent Center for Emergency Homeless, of which he was appointed chairman. Among other Italian intellectuals, scientists and professional engineers, he was in strict contact with the eminent structural engineer Pierluigi Nervi, a leading figure in the international scenario of the borders between the art and science of buildings who was entrusted by Colonetti of a specific contribution to the Manual of Architects being published by the CNR and cooperated with Colonetti in writing a celebrated book on shelf structures. It is in this scenery of attention to construction techniques and materials that Colonetti as a representative of CNR was involved in the form Foundation Frilem in 1947 and entrusted the role of the first president. But it was not only the material reconstruction of Italy that was at the center of Colonetti's vision in those years of the Renaissance of our country. 
he wrote, it is not just material ruins, those to which is urgently needed to rem remedy today. There are also other ruins and devastation in the world of spirit and culture, perhaps even more serious, to which particular attention must be paid. Connected to this such vision are, for example, his interest in the involvement of the conception of fundamental reform of the plans and programs of university studies. On another front, Colonetti had an intense interest in the safeguard of cultural and architectural heritage and was largely involved in the project for the safeguard of the temples of Abu Simbel in Egypt by lifting them above the level of the artificial lake. He also studied the way of stopping the inclination of the Tower of Pisa and played an essential role in sensitizing the Italian international community to the need of a proper intervention at this respect, which was accomplished in the following decades. One last important aspect of Colonetti's personality, and I will conclude with this mention, was his deep feeling about the responsibility of science and scientists with respect to the development of society with special regard to peace. He wanted to leave this as his testament and his last initiatives has been the organization of a congress in 1967 in Turin, whose subject was in fact uh, the responsibility of men of science. I will end quoting a sentence from Colonetti's choosing, closing speech at the Rilem meeting of, in Sorrento in 1948, pronounced at the farewell banquet that was held in Capri. We frequently regret the scientific progress may lead to application for military scopes to instruments of devastation and death. But the domain of which we take care is a privileged one. In fact, we take care of the strength of materials, but not of materials of any kind, but of those devoted to construction. This means that our work is a work of construction intended to offer to the people houses, infrastructures, bridges, railways, favoring work, progress and happiness. And it is with this hope that I intend to close, wishing that our work may bring some non-negligible contribution to the defense of our civilization when in danger and to the reconstruction of an unified Europe in a better world. Well, in fact, I believe uh, Rilan is exactly what my father would want at this period, because uh, knowing what he always hoped uh, young people would do and what they could do in the future is what Rilan is trying to do. So he would certainly be very proud of uh, all the work done by all these young students and scientists and uh, certainly would be sure of their uh, future, looking for peace, looking for responsibility of their work and whatever their work will bring for the world. Thank you. Mariana is coming. We have also a small gift for you from Ravine as a memory uh, of the city. It is uh, painted on glass uh, by, uh, by an artist, but uh, it was painted afterwards by hand also from the members of the Center for Rehabilitation and uh, plenary uh, speakers and um, uh, Madame Colonetti will get this for a long memory of the city. Thank you very much.